we're going to cover the best bodybuilding exercises that you can use for Olympic weightlifting, and we're going to start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better weightlifter, you want to be more explosive, you want to be more mobile, you want to have a bigger back squat, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you hit those PRs. So the sport of Olympic weightlifting is notorious for having athletes that have those little skinny arms. They're notorious for being that sport that has really unassumingly strong athletes because people see weightlifters walking down the street and they're going, there's no way that person actually lifts weights. And what this comes back to is that a lot of people neglect bodybuilding exercises to help them in the realm of Olympic weightlifting. And if we can think of some of the best teams in the world, some of the best teams in the world, like the Chinese weightlifting team, tend to be extremely hypertrophic. You can even see the Chinese weightlifting team in the back room, in the training hall at the World Championships, doing tons of bodybuilding exercises, even leading up to their peak at the World Championships. And so we know that teams that are extremely successful, like the Chinese team, tend to do a ton of bodybuilding. And so why is that? We've got to sit there and say like, what is bodybuilding right off the bat? How can we define bodybuilding? We've got to recognize that bodybuilding is something based around strengthening and enlarging muscles and ultimately also strengthening our ligaments, strengthening our tendons so that our joint capsules become a bit more stable. So that's the base definition of what bodybuilding does we know that, okay, it's gonna increase the size of our tendons, it's gonna increase the size of our ligaments, it's going to improve joint stability, ideally, right, per in a perfect case scenario. But it also can typically be based around isolation movements. It's not always isolation movements, but a lot of different bodybuilding exercises can be isolation movements. And in a sport like weightlifting, where we're always doing bilateral work, or we're always favoring one side like we do in a split jerk, now when we start to work on these bodybuilding movements, those isolation movements can help us become more structurally stable. We can get rid of any structural imbalances and improve our foundational integrity just by triggering any type of muscular growth or coordination through various isolation movements. So it's important to understand the definition of bodybuilding and the role that it can play on Olympic lifting. And so we've got to think too, why is it important for Olympic lifting? We know that the Olympic lifts are the snatch, so we're going overhead in one movement. We know that the clean and jerk, we're going to our shoulders in one movement, and then we're going overhead in the second movement. We know that these exercises also improve with bilateral squats, with bilateral front squats. We also know that there's a lot of strength movements like pulls off the floor. So a lot of different joints take a beating. And so if we can take that step back and say, all right, if this is the sport, if Olympic weightlifting is is the snatch, it's the clean, it's the jerk, it's a back squat, it's these pulls, we know that the shoulders are gonna get banged up. We know that the elbows are gonna get banged up. We know our lower back is gonna get banged up. Our knees are gonna get banged up. And so now we have to take that step back even further and say, all right, if we can recognize the stress that is involved with Olympic lifting, what might happen to those different areas that tend to be problem areas, what exercises can we do with each area to ultimately improve our body's integrity and lead to greater performance in the sport of weightlifting? And that's the key aspect here is we've got to recognize we're doing bodybuilding movements to increase our performance for weightlifting. And so we know in the snatch, in the jerk, our upper back gets hammered. We're dealing with a lot of different stress. So how can we actually try to develop our upper back from a bodybuilding perspective? And this is where we've come up with a really, really unique exercise based off of a lot of the research of Stuart McGill, who works on lower back disorders. And so we know that the lower back can really grow and become a little bit more coordinated if it's under isometric tension. And so what we've done is we take a glute ham and we hold an isometric position. And while we're holding that isometric position, we're doing 12 to 17 reverse flies. So not only are we hammering the rear delts, that upper back, the thoracic spine, but we're also 
focusing on dynamic trunk control. We're also squeezing our posterior chain and we're focusing on improving our recruitment of our lower back by hammering that isolated position. And so I recommend doing this once or twice a week for three to four sets of 12 to 17 reps. So that takes us into our next problem area, which is our lower back. We know that the pulls, the back squats, the cleans, everything is going to lead to lower back issues in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. But one of those exercises that we like to utilize to really target the lower back, to target the glutes and the hamstrings is a banded back extension. And so I actually recommend using the banded back extension and pausing around that 45 degree angle for four to six seconds. Now that's gonna to lead to that more time under tension. Now our body has to focus on squeezing and contracting a little bit more. And now we're gonna have a little bit better mind-muscle connection. And so that's one of the key factors here with bodybuilding. A lot of Olympic lifters struggle with the mind-muscle connection. They struggle with that body control because it's such a rapid movement. It's such a fast sport. But when you start to do these exercises consistently and you're using pauses and you're using that banded back extension, now you start to feel that mind muscle connection a little bit more effectively. So not only is your lower back going to get stronger, you're also going to be able to recruit it more effectively when you're lifting off the floor or when you're executing that back squat. And so I recommend doing this once or twice a week as a warm up. And then once or twice a week as an accessory exercise, say three to four sets for 17 to 20 reps. A lot of weightlifters also deal with a lot of fatigue and stress in their elbows because they're constantly focused on hammering that lockout in the snatch. They're focused on hammering that lockout in the jerk. And so we've got to think about, all right, how can we work on our bicep strength? And the other key factor here is, our bicep inserts into our shoulder. So a lot of bicep injuries can lead to serious shoulder pain, which then also comes back to serious elbow pain. And so what we've done is we can take something like incline Zotman curls and we can really start to focus on forearm development. We start to focus on that bicep development just by leaning back and letting our arms hang and doing an incline curl. And then we're gonna rotate and we're gonna slowly lower that dumbbell through a pronated grip all the way down for about three to four seconds. And then we're gonna fully extend our elbow. We're gonna turn that wrist back. And if we turn that wrist back, now we're gonna have a little bit more range of motion through our bicep. And so the incline Zotman curl can really help strengthen our bicep, which can also potentially prevent any serious shoulder issues while leading to a little bit more protective mechanisms throughout the elbow. And so we like to put these into the program about once a week for four to five sets of, again, when we're talking about bodybuilding, 12 to 17 reps, and you're gonna get a nice pump. So make sure that you're doing these movements about two days before you would be lifting heavier because some of these movements can make your biceps a little bit sore. Maybe you're doing it before a day off or that next day you're gonna do a nice easy workout and then two days later you can really start to hammer away. But the incline Zotman curls are a tremendous bicep exercise to help with the stress of Olympic lifting. So another problem area goes back to that upper back is gonna be the thoracic spine. And they're sort of in conjunction, and they're almost the exact same thing. But what I like to do with this specific exercise is I like to get a really deep stretch all throughout the lats. Because it's an overhead movement, it can mimic what athletes are doing in the snatch in the jerk. And now when we move into executing the miracle grow, Okay, we're gonna take that dumbbell deep past the head. We're gonna have elbow flexion and we're gonna have a nice lengthening of the lats. And a lot of weightlifters struggle to actually utilize their lats overhead. They're almost like novice bench pressers who never really learn how to utilize their lats when they're benching heavy. But when we start to incorporate miracle grows, now that thoracic spine starts to wake up. Some of these weightlifters even have a spasm in their upper mid back and now we start to strengthen their lats in coordination with their triceps. And when you bring it overhead, it's a rapid lockout through from elbow flexion 
to elbow extension. And so utilizing the miracle grows will dramatically improve your tricep strength and your lat strength. Now, be warned, this movement, the first two or three times that you do this, will make you incredibly sore. It'll make you more sore than any other tricep exercise on the planet, I guarantee you, I guarantee you. But do this once or twice a week for five to six weeks, and all of a sudden, your triceps and your lockout is going to be phenomenal. And we even have lifters like Haley Reichert she can do up to 70 pounds on the miracle Grow for seven to nine reps. And she's got one of the absolute best jerks on the planet, pound for pound. So finally, before we get into the last problem area, we've put together a 12 week bodybuilding and Olympic weightlifting based program. So this is a program where two to three days out of the week, you're hitting the classic lifts with some variations. And then twice a week, we're actually gonna be doing bodybuilding based stuff to improve the strength in our upper body. So you can click on the link down below to pick up your bodybuilding for Olympic weightlifting program today. So my last favorite exercise to improve our knee health from a bodybuilding perspective are the Spanish squats. And so I like to utilize the Spanish squats with a pretty thick band wrapped around the back part of our knees. And one of the key factors here is to lock out at the top and squeeze your quads back against the band in the lockout position for about three to four seconds. Now remember, this is a bodybuilding exercise. This is a bodybuilding video. We're focused on time under tension. And if we can do that, every single rep for 15, 17, 20 reps. Now our quads are gonna to start to recruit really, really well. And I love to utilize this movement, especially with our long-legged lifters. If we have a lifter who's a very good snatcher, they tend to be a little bit longer limbed. So their knees tend to get banged up a little bit more than a shorter limbed lifter. And so when you start to utilize Spanish squats about twice a week, now that longer leg lifter they're gonna actually get a little bit of quad development, but in turn, it's gonna help to prevent any knee issues that they might have, or it at least will alleviate that knee pain that they're struggling with because the Spanish squats contribute tremendously well to proper recruitment around that knee joint. So if you want a program developed specifically for bodybuilding and Olympic lifting, you can click on the link down below. You can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up our bodybuilding for Olympic lifting based program. If you want more videos about Olympic lifting, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.